better stand. Understanding medicine. Professor Azizur Rahman again from MedStand. This is the second of the two lecture series on pleural fusion. And if you have not watched my earlier video, which covers the basic concept about pleural fusion, it is recommended that you watch that one first and then see this one. And this video is actually continuation of the same one and in the form of some revision. This is a, a quiz. Uh, I try to make it as an interactive uh, session. Of course, you will not be able to actually uh, interact because this is a recorded video. But I will play it slowly so that you have the chance of giving me your response when you watch this video before I uh, show my response. So this is a revision in the form of quiz. What is the diagnosis here? This is an XHS PFN. What is the diagnosis? Very simple. It is pleural fusion. So this big homogeneous opacity obliterating costophrenic angle, cardiophrenic angle, diaphragm, left heart border, and classical curvilinear border. I think if you see, there is slight shift of the midline structure to the opposite side also. Trachea is normal, but heart is deviated slightly toward the right side. This fluid has pushed this heart only slightly to the right side. What is this? Again, pleural fusion, but this time it is right-sided and it is bigger than the previous one. So large pleural fusion is pushing the heart to the other side. This is even bigger. Of course, you do not have that characteristic upper border because this whole Hemithorax is full of fluid, but from its looks, it look it definitely is pleural fusion. And if there is any doubt, then you could do ultrasound, you could do CT scan. But this definitely looks like a big, massive effusion, very dense. And you can see the all obliterations of angles and diaphragm and heart. And there's a push of very significant sh shift of heart to the right side. And this is likely to be malignant because these big effusions which cover the whole hemithorax are most likely to be malignant. Trachea is also deviated to the right. So it's a massive left sided pleural fusion with midline shift. Okay. Somebody having PA film and right lateral film. What do you see? There's opacity here. And if you just see at this line going this way, this is perhaps insisted effusion in the transverse fissure. Same is visible here. You see? Uh, no, I think transverse fissure should be here. This is the oblique fissure and transverse fissure should be here. So it is not then transverse fissure. It is somewhere, but this is the different it looks like and in cystic diffusion, maybe along the posterior chest wall. Okay, so this is again fusion. This opacity and this opacity is the same indicator of pleural effusion and cystic. What is this? It's an ultrasound. Because ultrasound is done from abdomen, so this is liver and this is diaphragm and there is a fluid here. So this is pleural fusion where my cursor is. This is pleural fusion, okay? And this is kidney and here you also see some fluid on the liver side. So this, there may be slight a rim of ascites. So this is fluid in the peritoneum, this is diaphragm, this is fluid in the pleura. So this is pleural fusion on ultrasound. You can figure out what test is this. This is CT scan, two different persons actually. This is the vertebra 
and this is normal aerated lung black this is heart and what is this crescent big crescent like structure this one this is pleural fusion where my, I'm moving my cursor this is pleural fusion and this is collapsed lung normally lung should be like this one but since air is removed air is absorbed and this is compressed lung this uh, more or less spleen like structure this is actually collapsed lung and if you see the other side uh, other CT there is bilateral this big thing is fluid and and this big thing is fluid okay so there is bilateral fluid it may be blood or it may be if it is a case of trauma it may be blood or it may be transudate or exudate or whatever so we can't tell from this but we can surely tell that there is bilateral pleural fusions CT scan. This is unilateral and th this is bilateral. Now suppose you had sent the pleural fluid for examination and this is the smear you got. These big nuclei and ugly looking cells, big huge cells with big nuclei. I think if you have some knowledge about the pathology, they definitely look malignant. So what exact what is the exact origin of course you need special staining and only a trained histopathologist can tell if this is pleural malignant cells or bronchial or breast cancer or prostate cancer whatever so i think uh, only pathologists will tell any malignancy if it is affected pleura it is considered to be stage four so that is another importance it is it means it is beyond the possibility of any surgical resection or cure somebody having fever and on pleural biopsy you find this one if you recall your knowledge of pathology this might impress you as granuloma right accumulation of cells in this form with central caseation you know these two are caseating lesions as so i think histopathologists will have no difficulty identifying this as caseating granuloma although we have not seen AFB maybe there are some but I'm not sure but even this caseating granuloma uh, is quite a diagnostic of tuberculosis you may see similar granulomas but non caseating in uh, sarcoidosis also and some other granulomatous disorder tuberculosis granuloma now I'm going to show you some statements and you are going to respond in the form of true or false. Bilateral pleural effusions are commonly transudates. Is it true or false? True. In tuberculous pleural effusion, fluid examination usually reveals AFB. AFB is short of acid fast bacillus which is the same as mycobacterium tuberculosis. So what do you think if in plural tuberculosis, if there is a tuberculous pleural effusion, would you be able to see AFB in all cases? No, only in 10% because mycobacterium stays within the granuloma and this is just a hypersensitivity reaction and this is exudative fluid. Mycobacterium is usually not seen in the Pleural fluid, although the molecular tests like mycobacterium DNA and gene expert tests can detect remnants of bacterium in the fluid. Pleuritic pain and pleural rub suggest exudates. Exudate. Yes, of course, pain and rub would indicate inflammation, and in inflammation, you get exudate. Hemorrhagic fluid is highly suggestive of tuberculosis. True or false? No, I think it is not true. If there is frankly hemorrhagic fluid, I would suspect mostly malignancy and maybe pulmonary infarction. Tuberculosis fluid is typically straw color.
low sugar content in pleural effusion is a typical feature of a rheumatoid arthritis. You may be wondering what is the relevance of sugar with rheumatoid arthritis. Typically, low sugar is a feature of bacterial infection. But what do you think? In rheumatoid arthritis, yes, this is true. In patients with the rheumatoid arthritis related pleural effusion, glucose contents are reduced. You always have to compare glucose content of any body fluid with the plasma glucose. Patient with cardiac failure may have pleural effusion protein contents in the range of exudate. You know, normally in heart failure, you get transudate, but this particular question is that just the protein contents, we're not talking about the LDH level or the cellular count or other features, just the protein level may be in the range of exudate, that is the ratio of pleural fluid protein with serum may be more than 0.6. This is true because in chronic transudative effusion because of the use of uh, uh, diuretics the fluid is absorbed protein accumulates so with time protein contents may reach the level which we see in exudates other features of exudate will not be present but just the protein contents may be in that range so i think if you base your diagnosis purely on protein contents you could be wrong in this case Large unilateral pleural effusion in patient with CCF suggests some other cause. The heart failure, CCF is congestive cardiac failure. We have pleural effusion, usually bilateral, usually mild to moderate, uh, but not massive because bilateral massive pleural effusion would not be compatible with life. So the question is if there is, you have a known case of heart failure and there is one sidal pleural effusion which is fairly big that suggests that the cause of pleural effusion is actually different than heart failure. Is this statement true or false? It is true. So unilateral large effusion, whether or not heart failure should suggest a local cause. The most sensitive investigation for pleural effusion is ultrasound compared to X-ray or CD. If you compare it with uh, X-ray, I certainly it is true, but I think it may be as sensitive as CT. Uh, so uh, the, you can take the statement accordingly. With as compared to CT, it may be equivalent, but when compared with the X-ray, it is more sensitive. That means ultrasound is likely to pick up small amount of fusion as compared to X-ray. So we are continuing. Uh, hypertensive patients, I think this is the state, hypertensive patients usually develop bilateral pleural effusion after IV fluid therapy. That is false. Pleural effusion with high uh, triglyceride contents is a feature of thoracic duct rupture. Yes, because chylomicrons are triglycerides. So that is true statement. Patient on peritoneal dialysis often develop bilateral pleural effusion. Yes, a small amount of fluid can go up to the pleura, but it's usually on the right side. I'm not sure. I think this is perhaps exception. Uh, I would say the, fault, the statement is false. It doesn't, every, every patient doesn't develop it. Occasional patient, some fluid from the peritoneum can leak into the uh, right side, so that is the case. Exudative pleural effusion with high lymphocyte count may be empirically treated as tuberculosis. In old days, that is what we used to do because we wouldn't find AFP only on circumstantial evidence, somebody having fever somebody having weight loss, unilateral pleural effusion, it is exudate and predominant lymphocytes who would assume the diagnosis of tuberculosis and treat them. These days there is a possibility of doing MTB, DNA, PCR and also DNA gene expert. So and I think the diagnosis may, may become more precise but this statement still 
true the lymphocytic exudates are most likely tuberculosis at least in our uh, society massive pleural effusion with mediastinal shift is almost certainly malignant true tuberculous pleural effusions they do not become massive they become moderate and usually not massive similarly bilateral pleural effusions are never massive because that would not be compatible so unilateral massive pleural effusion is mostly due to malignancy Pleurodesis is indicated in intractable pleural effusion in CCF. Congestive cardiac failure patient who, who have intractable pleural effusion, fluid is there, it doesn't go. I think pleurodesis may be indicated. Pleurodesis is a technique where you take out fluid and inject something. It could be talc or it could be some other agent, some uh, chemicals cryobacterium antigen i think also something is injected uh, and that can lead to induction of inflammation and closure of pleural space so that used to be one treatment i think it is still uh, valid in some cases and cystic diffusion may be confused with malignancy yes because in cystic diffusion may look rounded just like a tumor so it may be diagnosed as malignant tumor and maybe with treatment when this effusion disappears, the tumor disappears, we call it phantom. Phantom is something which is not real. So we used to call it phantom tumor. I think in these days we can be sure on CT. Uh, so we probably will not have this confusion. If there is possibility of insisted fusion, we can go ahead with CT and be sure if it is a fusion or tumor. And it is also called vanishing tumor. Uh, because it would appear, uh, disappear with time. Repeated paracentesis may be required in intractable pleural effusion. Somebody has pleural effusion which doesn't go or comes back again and again. Maybe one of the palliative procedure is repeated pleural taps. Acidic pH suggests empyema and requires intubation. This is little tricky. A frank empyema would look like pus, so there that there will be no confusion. But literature says if pleural fluid is acidic in pH, normal our body fluids are alkaline. If it is acidic, pH is less than seven, that would actually in indicate invasion of pleural space with bacteria. So that is an indirect sign of invasion of bacteria, and once there is evidence of invasion of bacteria we treat it as exudate uh, as empyema and chest intubation is indicated all transudative pleural effusions tend to appear on right side first heart failure cirrhosis nephrotic syndrome the pleural fluid accumulates on the right side first Ultimately, it may become bilateral, but initially it is usually right-sided. And if somebody has bilateral, right-sided effusion will be bigger. This is true. We do not exactly know the mechanism, but generally quoted explanation is that because of the some fenestration in the diaphragm pleura, the, the diaphragm, I think some pleural fluid accumulates there. And I, I'm not exactly sure the reason, but the statement is definitely right. Meek syndrome is due to pleural metastasis from ovarian cancer. It's a false statement. Meek's syndrome is actually somebody have ovarian tumor, which is B9, but that may be associated with the transudative effusion on the right side. Nobody knows the mechanism, but this combination of two is called Meek syndrome. It is not malignant. Bilateral exudative pleural effusion with mediastinal lymphadenopathy suggests lymphoma. Yes, that is right. Paracentesis may induce vasovagal shock. Paracentesis of pleura is generally considered to be simple bedside procedure and generally very safe, but it can actually lead to vasovagal shock. 
somebody who is very nervous could develop a vasovagal shock. So you should have all the preparations. So any procedure, any medical procedure should not be taken lightly. And I think the luracentesis should be done in a proper setup where you have the facility of handling any complication. Presence of amylase in pleural effusion suggests pancreatitis. Yes, that's true. Pancreatitis is also one of the causes of unilateral left-sided pleural effusion or bilateral pleural effusion. So if there is unilateral left-sided pleural effusion and if you do this amylase, if it's high, that would suggest the diagnosis of pancreatitis. So that was all. I just hope that you like this revision and quiz. So this completes our module on pleural effusion. Of course, there's a lot more you can learn from other um, sources. But if you have any query, please post your question here and I will be very happy to answer your query. This is Professor Azizur Rahman from Medistan, Understanding, Disease, Understanding Medicine.